Hi, Steve. So we're continuing here. Um, the front left corner of the house, right? Right here. Uh, I think you should have some height to frame that corner of the house. In reality, the horn beam might even be better off on this corner of the house and then putting something mid-height, say that something that grows somewhere between 8 to 15 feet tall over here. And again, a horn beam which grows much taller off the corner. So you frame the house. Uh, having a boxwood in this corner is not a bad idea, and um, you are going to also another thing to think about is hydrangea don't like afternoon sunlight; they get scorched. So um, you just got to be careful with how much sunlight you have on this side of the house, because uh, that could be an issue. Over here on this side, you might consider adding in roses, um, considering you get full sun on this side. Um, in this corner over here behind the house, considering it's not a very visible area on the ACs, I would keep my budget as low as possible in this area. So I'd probably do less plants, um, very few perennials. Let's see here. Same thing with the Rose of Sharon over here. Um, unless it's a focal point outside of an area in your house that you're looking out of a window, I, again, uh, I, I wouldn't be that concerned. For the street, like we had talked about before, um, I would think about your your line of sights coming out of your house. Think about the fact whether you want to create a sound barrier or whether you want to create these groupings of evergreen trees. And these are actually deciduous, these Kusa dogwoods down here. The dogwoods, he's got them drawn at like about 5 feet a piece, about 5 feet apart. Remember, those trees grow about 25 feet tall, 25 feet wide. So unless you're trying to create a hedge of dogwoods, um, then I probably wouldn't have them spaced that close together. I'm just looking around here at the other part of the design. So over here, we're looking at uh, you know the curved patio, which I think is a good idea. For those boxwoods at the top of the curve of the patio, you should do green velvet boxwoods. This is the best form of a dwarf boxwood on the market. Don't do the dwarf English boxwoods, okay? Those have a lot of problems. Um, on this side, the basic design is very simple, but it, it could work as far as spirea goes. You probably have too many. You probably only need about three and three. Um, same thing. You know, you have three boxwoods in a little corner. You could probably just get one big one and put it there. Um, the l secondary layer of perennials in front of the spirea is a good idea. But again, you might want to mix in um, some different varieties. It doesn't really specify it on this design. Um, and even hydrangea would do really well along this side of the patio. You could do a dwarf hydrangea like a pia hydrangea or a city line hydrangea. That would work. Um, and then the screening over here, I wouldn't put a styrax tree right next to a row of arborvitae with the fact that the Styrax tree over time will grow about 30 feet tall, about 20, 25 feet wide. So as you can imagine, it's going to shade and grow into the arborvitae hedge. So that's probably not the best idea. Rather than doing that, I'd probably pull the Styrax tree and put it in the lawn um, or a different, again, a different tree, but I wouldn't put it right next to a hedge. That's going to create a problem over time, overcrowding. Um, on the left side of the garage, Let's see here. We've got some hydrangea, which will be fine because, again, those will get morning sun, afternoon shade, which is what they prefer. Boxwood and Navinka would work fine as well. Okay. So, but overall thoughts is there's there's too many plants, which is common for a lot of landscapers who don't really know the mature, mature size of these plants. Um... There's, there could be probably more interest with a few different varieties of plants rather than just having all the same varieties around the whole property. Um, so I think the best thing to do is is possibly think about doing another fine detailed design. Um, I think with you know with the current way it's set up, you're spending about twenty twenty two thousand bucks on plants, and I feel like you can spend the same amount of money but get a lot more bang for your buck with a much better design uh, if we did it. Um, so take a look at our website.
take a look at 242 Ocean Drive West in Stanford, or you can look at the hundred other projects that we've done in the area, and uh, and get a sense of what of what you're looking at. The other thing is a lot of your plants are too small that that he's ordering. Boxwoods only grow two to four inches a year, so you wouldn't want to get boxwoods that small up against the foundation of your house. You probably want to get the 32 to 36 inch boxwoods. A little bit bigger, a little bit more expensive, but they're about three years ahead. Same thing with all your trees. Trees that he has in there are fairly small. I gave you options for bigger trees at really good prices. So I can guarantee you if you had priced out the trees that I suggested that it's uh, pretty much impossible for another vendor, another landscaper to compete. Um, hope uh, you have any questions, give me a ring. I'll send this over to YouTube too. Thanks. Bye.